Welcome, uh, amazing uh, after-holiday realtors, agents, and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, December 26th, 2019, and this is Mastermind Call number 258. We actually have pretty good attendance, about half of what we usually do, but uh, we got plenty of room today to get all your comments, questions, challenges, anything you need help with, that's what we're here for. Just hit star six and hit one. Uh, right now, we only have one person in the queue. Partners, what, what do you have to say for yourself today? Anything to add? It was a wonderful holiday. Enjoyed wonderful time with family and friends and uh, came back ready to rock and roll for a couple of days between now and New Year's. Make great plans and get ready to rock and roll next year. Did you awesome. get your usual lump of coal, Tim? I got several <laughs> lumps, and uh, so it was cold and broke up a vicious uh, dog fight on the porch between Annie and Reggie while they fought oh, over no. my brilliant wife's decision to get them both the same exact toy for uh, dog toys for Christmas. And as you know my dogs, you know how well that went. Oh, no. No, no vet trip this time, I hope. No, but uh, there, was, there was a little bit of, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, Annie's walking around with a bandaged foot. Oh, no. All right. Well, high drama at the Andal household. Uh, Chad, anything you want to share? No drama llama here. <clears throat> um, I do want to remind everybody, we did move the January mastermind call. It's not going to be on the 1st uh, because that, but on the holiday. We're actually moved, we moved it to January the, the following Wednesday. So the second Wednesday in January, I believe that's the 8th. At, uh, and Chad, you meant you meant the role play call. You said mastermind, but I knew what you meant. Our monthly role, role play, play call. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. normally it's the first Wednesday of each month. We're doing the second Wednesday in January because of the holidays. So remember, just be sure to update your calendar. It's uh, I think it's Wednesday the eighth at two p.m. Eastern. And Chad, I already have people. You probably haven't booked it yet. I already have people asking about the January uh, mastery. Uh, I, that's so I a little bit some, too far. Some travel dates okay. trying to settle in, but it looks like the week of the, I should get a calendar in front of me, um, the week of, I believe it's the 20th, the third week of January is where Mastery, I believe, is going to fall. Okay, um, perfect. Yeah, probably the 21st, 20th, 21st, 22nd is I think where Excellent. I'm going to, that's, that's going to drop into the schedule. And it's not too early to get signed up for that now. So we've had some really, really good classes lately, big classes. Yeah, actually, we had a couple people sign up today. If you don't, if you, you know, so you don't have to wait three weeks. If you're waiting to take mastery, go ahead and sign up now, and we'll send you the. Uh, quite honestly, the October recordings were, was the best class I've ever done. So we'll send you the October recordings, uh, so you can, you know, at least get started between now and then, and then you'll have, you'll be registered for the live class, whenever I do schedule it. Perfect. Well, Tom, we've got a small group today, so uh, I'll even ask you for comments. Anything you want to share? <laughs> oh, I just want you to continue on like you always do, though. <laughs> I have nothing today. All right, nothing to add. We only have one person like in the queue. always do, Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, just drone on. We only have one person in the queue, guys. We've got about 60 people on the line, so please don't be shy. It's star six and hit one. Issues, questions, places you're getting stuck, comments, wins, nothing is out of bounds here. So let's go to, we just hit star six and hit one, and let's go to our first and only person in the queue right now. Phone number ending in 2821. I think that's Bud Thompson. Am I correct? Uh, yes, it is. Can you hear me? Can hear you loud and clear, sir. Okay. Well, I'll start with a compliment. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I, yeah, I was talking to Jim what a couple days ago uh, for that leak, uh, that monthly coaching call. That was that was great, Jim. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you. It's been what four, four years, three months that I've been doing this, and uh, it's the worst year I've ever had in 15 years. What do you think of that? Well, gee, thank you for sharing. I'm, I'm glad I asked you to come on. <laughs> it ended with the best month I've ever had in 15 years. So anyway, and to, to be to I, be I, fair, but I think you I think you had some health issues this year, correct? Did that well, yeah, I had a, 
I, I, yeah. had a, I had a, I had a couple surgeries, and then uh, I made a bad decision to become the designated broker for our office. But I gave that back after about a year, and that ended this yeah. summer. Anyway, and that that blew the business. Anyway, but uh, I, I gra grabbed some statistics here quickly. Uh, the best month was because of you guys, and uh, you saved our bacon this year. Uh, I've got the stats basically. I only had uh, 14 closings, but uh, 11 of the, th of the 14 were because of you guys. Can you believe that? One way or another. So 11 out of 11 out of your 14 deals were probate deals. Well, they were either probate or senior transition that were referred to me. You know, I, what was the deal? I've got uh, nine out of. 14 deals were referred to me by past attorneys that I'd worked other probates with because of you guys. I had a couple uh, close that were just come list me's, you know, off the, off one mailing of the list. And, uh, you know, so I got to say, and I had a couple uh, probates that were from past clients because they knew I worked probates a lot and I learned it through you guys. So anyway, I would say, well, we're up there about to... Uh, Really, about um, 12 out of 14 was because I got into ATL about four years ago and had been working it. And, uh, yeah, so most of it was because of you guys teaching me how to work with attorneys and probates. And uh, it would have been an incredibly disastrous year if it hadn't been for that. But, uh, like I said, uh, I had uh, nine of them come from lawyer referrals, which is a come get me. Uh, I think you told me. Didn't you tell me What's you that? had seven? Did you? But I think you said you had seven closings last week. Is that right? Six or seven? Well, six in the six in the month of December. You know, for okay. <laughs> that's that's an indicator. I had fourteen for the year, and six of them were in this last month, and, and nine of wow. them in the last quarter. You know, it was it it came back around. Of course, I got a lot of hustle to do, but um, I just wanted to say thank you. And I don't know if you. That's kind of the story. Uh, I will say, I, I, in the process of these statistics. I uh, picked up four or five referrals from an estate sale company that I learned and got acquainted with and became friends with over the four years, and none of those converted to listings. What do you think of that? Huh. I think it, I think it means I haven't educated my own referral partner how to present me so I can get the door open. Uh, well, I actually did listing appointments on them, but uh, I, I captured none. So. I'll ask you guys for advice on that. Why did I lose four out of four uh, when a referral partner got the door open for me? I think you answered your own question. I, I really, I'll commend you on that accountability. Like you, you need to do a better job having them sell you, right? So yep. they're eager to meet with you and you only. It sounds like, you know, there, there's a habit in, the, in our industry and I think timid brokers are to blame for this, but everybody feels like we have to give three three lender referrals, three title companies, three home inspectors. Like it's just become like the referral of three. So what's likely happening is they're referring you, they're referring you, and then two other people, and someone might be doing a better job. So I would learn more about how they refer you. Like what does that com What's what's said in that conversation? And well, we, are they, are we, they uh, referring your competition? Uh -huh. Well, what, what happens, we had dinner and serious numbers of drinks about a week ago with them, a husband-wife team, and it turns out they basically were just calling us uh, real estate agents that were close friends with them and recommend them. And it dawned on me, I've never put any of my trifold brochures in their hands, and basically you guys, you know, you know about the trifolds. Uh, I haven't I haven't equipped them. I haven't armed them to help me. So that's one of the things I got to work on this year. It's amazing what a little bit of scotch will do as far as clearing things up for you. <laughs> so, uh, but you you led us right into that. My question I was going to say you know thank you for sharing. And my question for you was what can what can we do for you in 2020? Like what are your goals? And what do you need us to do to hold you accountable? Well, I've had the same goals for two, three years now, 
in Keller Williams, we have four conversations. That's uh, seven listing appointments a month, three listings taken, three closings a month, and 13,000 GCI. But, you know, it's the same thing, and I hit about, well, a third of it, basically. Um, one, I think you guys are doing great. Uh, I Personally, you want to know the truth, I am, I've never really listened to you, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bud. <laughs> how's that, how's but, that fact uh, working out today, Bud? Is it working out good for you? <laughs> but, you know, uh, I confess that we've only sent out one letter to each prospect or each probate case and then scoot on to the next thing and never circle back. But this, uh, we're starting to circle back and now make second mailings, third mailings. And yes, I've been through the phone calls, did that for a year or two. And I've gotten totally away from it. Now I'm getting back into it. And uh, I'll pick up your next mastery next time it comes around and get my head back into the game. But uh, uh, you guys offer what everybody needs. It's just a matter of uh, when the student's ready to learn, the instructor can teach, is, is paraphrased. You know, but uh, yep. yeah, you offer the right well, stuff, Chad. I just haven't been paying attention. Fair enough, and that's something that, that we obviously rec we realize, and as you know, we've, we're going to be calling you every 30 days, you're not going to be able to escape. So I want to know, like, what is it that we need? When you have your monthly coaching call, what do mm -hmm. we need to hold your feet to the fire to, like, if you're not getting the mail done? And that's, that's what our coaches are, you know, we, there's nobody on this call that's immune to this. We've all done it. We all do it. We're all doing it. And mm -hmm. sometimes you just need people to say, hey, you said you were going to X. Why haven't you? And that's, it's important to us that we understand what it is that will motivate you or demotivate you and what will help us get you to those, I think it's 84 deals this year, right? So how can we do that? And even after this call, I want you to think about that. So when you have your next coaching call with Jim, like say, all right, Jim, here's what, I, here's what I'm, I'm going to do this year, and here's how you can hold me accountable. And we want to do you that know, for each and every one of you guys. Yeah, and that little quick conversation with Jim was very enlightening. He did a great job. Of course, he's a pro coach, too, like you are. And uh, it was actually 84 listing appointments, 36 listings taken and closed. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I've got to get from uh, 14 to 36 this year for sure. And I think I can do it, uh, especially Easily when doable. the lawyers – what's that? Easily doable. Yeah, it is. It really is. Uh Especially, you know, once you get past the uh, uh, the mindset that I can't do six deals in a month, of course I can. So I just Absolutely. wanted to say that, it, Jim, you uh, did I leave anything out you wanted me to say? No, I really you, appreciate you it, know, but it's interesting. We, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just said come on and share. We try to. We we try to give everybody kind of the bit, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's been interesting for me. I've made probably 150 of these coaching calls, and it amazes me how many people are getting a decent return on their investment, but they're doing about 10 or 20% of what we recommend, you know. And one thing you've all, you've done extraordinarily well, bud, you've gotten, you've gotten uh, really good at adopting everybody in the probate deal into your SOI, and you've gotten real good at getting ancillary business, you know, from the original probate lead. And I, I just wonder, maybe... You got so good at that, did it make you just a little bit uh, complacent or, or lazy to go back and keep making the calls? Do you think that's what happened, or where do you think you got off track? I think that's a really nice way to say it, Jim. Yeah, I got real lazy, and uh, it got to the point, yeah, where I, some of these attorneys, I think got, I got three deals or four from this year, plus I sold one of their houses, plus I went to their wedding. You know, So, yeah, I got lazy. And I'd sit there at a wedding reception and talk to three of the attorneys that I've gotten deals from. So uh, yep. I got lazy. Yeah. All, All right. right. I'm going I'm I'm to step in and defend you here. I don't know much about the story, but you <laughs> you learned a valuable lesson that brokers are babysitters, it sounds like. And oh, it wasn't, God. It, it wasn't Anybody, the right yeah. fit for you. So you, you knocked yourself out of what, if you've ever read The Big Leap, Gay Hendricks explains it as your creative genius. Like, what you've been able to accomplish in December, like, that energy could have been used back in October, back in August, 
but you you committed to something else and that robbed you of that and there's a valuable lesson in that <clears throat> and we've we've all done that too we've all had to learn that so the the good news is you've learned that lesson you kind of refocused and boom you got you got great results you have six closings in a month so just take that lesson into 2020 and do it every month and you you've learned what to say no to at least one new thing that you need to say no to so protect mm -hmm. your own you got to make sure your cup's full first and it sounds like being the managing broker was emptying your cup so you weren't getting you weren't meeting your own obligations cuz you're helping everybody else am I right yeah that's right and it was a very subtle thing I, it actually took me about 3 months before I even noticed uh that I'd lost my momentum and the business was going down you know because sure. I was so preoccupied with listening to every whiner in the outfit uh and trying to work on their problems I got to know a lot of other managing brokers around town, but, you know, uh, aside yeah. from that. And you, but, you uh, hit the nail on the head. It's at the 90-day mark is usually where we know where our mindset screwed up. Like when if you're, if you're struggling, if you're out of money, look backwards 90 days. That's most yeah. likely where you tripped. And it takes, yep. us that, it's, it takes us that. It's a lagging indicator. It takes us that long to realize it. And it's okay. Yep. But I mean, you realize that you you made a change, and you got a pretty different result pretty pretty immediately, right? Well, and yeah. So except some some of the some of the result was the bulldozer effect. You know, in probate estate and senior transitions, these people can delay things because of emotional reasons. Uh, sure. You know, the time framing is all different. So some of them had bulldozed from October into November into December. But yeah, I did go uh, from one to three to six in uh, three months, yeah. yeah. And Bud, how many leads do you get a month on average? I'd say 100. Oh, you get 100, 100 probate leads a month? Yeah, for one uh, for the uh, county of Douglas County, Omaha, Nebraska, yep. Okay, I didn't realize you got that many. I thought you were getting a smaller quantity. But still, you know, out of 100 leads a month, out of 1,200 leads, you Eight, sent them. 36. What's that? Easily 36 deals in there for the 2020. How many? Oh, yeah. 36. Easily, easily 36. But what I was going to say is is you sent them one letter and didn't even call them, and you still got, a, you know, you still got 13 deals out of it. That's not – I mean, you're doing something right. Uh, you, you know, if you really work them, like Chad said, there, that was my, my follow-up point. If you really work them, the 36 really should be easy next year. Well, that's pretty encouraging, 36 out of 100. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was thinking if I could get to four or five out of 100, I'd be happy. But, uh, yeah, well, 36 out of no, 1,200. No, I mean, 36 for the year is a, is a pretty conservative. Oh, sure. That'd, yeah. be, uh, out of, that'd be 36 out of 1,200. That makes sense. Yeah, that's three. Isn't that three? What is that? 36? Yeah, three percent conversion. Like, and yeah, especially with, with and that's what you should get from your marketing effort. The the attorney referrals are going to be icing on the cake, but you if if you if you step up and do three letters and follow each with a phone call or even more aggressive than that, I have a hard time believing you'll do less than thirty six deals. Well, that is encouraging. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate well, you, Bud. Keep coming back and keep sharing. And uh, we hadn't heard from you in a while, and I, I thought that was worthwhile. I, I think it's somewhat encouraging to some of the new people that you don't have to follow the program 100%. You can still get decent results, but it's also probably <laughs> it's also probably pretty inspiring for a lot of people out there that uh, you know that are kind of started off doing it halfway, like like you did this last quarter, and you know j just the the, po the potential, the possibility, if you really work the program. And I appreciated that you realized that. I just wanted you to come share that. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it, bud. All right. You guys have a good year. Good to hear from you, bud. All right. Great hearing from you, man. We got three more in the queue, guys. We got plenty of room for more. Just hit star six and then hit one. Next up is phone number ending in 5916. You're up next. Hey, good afternoon, guys. This is Steve. Hey, got a question for you. Even based on the previous caller, talked about setting goals. Um, I know you can, even as someone who's brand new, just right out of the gate, I've adjusted my letter. Letters are going out. I mean, there should there be a goal that is appropriate? I, I suspect the answer is yes, but can it be too high or too low? And secondly, 
Uh, I think the other part that was made was kind of like the shoemaker who doesn't have shoes. You're doing things for everybody else, but not necessarily taking care of you. And just want to kind of get your thoughts on it. My um, current leads right now are about 30, uh, about 30 a month. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so one of the things, we have a tool that's a probate ROI calculator. And there's an older version of it that can be found on our blog that doesn't include all of the products and services we, we actually provide now. Um, here's what I'll do. <clears throat> You're in our, are you in our Facebook group, All the Leads Mastermind? Yes, I am, Chad. So as soon as we get off this call, I will post the Excel version of this. We're building it into your subscriber portal, so you'll, you'll have this to, to hold yourself accountable every day. So you'll come in, you'll have a dashboard, you'll have your inputs in the ROI calculator, and it'll show you your expected results. So it, we're working on it. It's almost finished. <clears throat> we should have it to you probably in, our, in January. But what I'll do for now in the interim, uh, I'll post right after this call. I'll post a post on Facebook with the Excel version of it so you can use it. But it basically gives you the opportunity to put in whether you're an investor, a realtor, or both. Like if you're working one strategy or if you're working both as suggested. And then you can pick a separate conversion rate. So if you're a newer investor, you know you're not going to get as high a conversion as an investor as a realtor. You just don't. So maybe that's 1%. And then as a realtor, maybe it's 2% or 3% is reasonable. If you really want to focus since you have so few leads, I mean, we have subscribers that can pull six deals a month out of 30 leads consistently. And it's just a matter of, you know, they're, they're calling until they speak to them. They, they're tenacious. They just keep going. But what I would encourage you to do is use that ROI calculator to put in your, your average commission, your average investor uh, spread, and your, median, your, your market median price. And it'll kind of churn out the result to say, here's what it looks like. And you can play with the percentages. You can say, okay, here's what it looks like if I do 1%, 2%, 3%. And start kind of set the expectation there. Um, as far as the other thing, like this is something personally I've struggled with, is just pouring so much into other people that sometimes you don't meet your own needs. And then three months later you realize, holy shit, I'm exhausted and things, are, things have gone sideways. And it's mainly because, like, and I find, just like Bud, if I look back 90 days, I can usually see where I tripped. And it's just a matter of really clearly defining, like, what do you need? And for me, a lot of that is I need space. Like, I need space to be creative. And, and any time that I let that go and I let email and support tickets and everything else flood in, then I become less useful to all of you guys. So look at what you need, and that's different for each of us. Like, you, you might need time with your family. You might need exercise. You might need season tickets to your favorite football team, what it like in time to go to those games. Whatever that is, put that first and make sure you hit that goal first. Then you'll have all the energy and, and like the creative energy and, the, and the, you'll, you know, you'll have what it takes to get this done and, and surprise yourself and far exceed your goals. But I would say look at your personal goals first. What do you want to feel like in 2020? What do you want to, how much do you want to, you know, not, not necessarily how much do you want to weigh, more is, like you want to feel healthy, you want to feel wealthy, you want to feel like you're contributing. But focus on how you personally want to feel first, then back into your business goals. And then say, okay, how do I design this in such a way that it will help me feel these ways personally where I'm operating at my best self? And, <coughs> excuse me, and you, we kind of saw how Bud learned that lesson in 2019 you know, he did something because he thought it was advancing his career, and he, he stepped up to be a managing broker. And it just, it mentally exhausted him, and that, that had ripples throughout his, his whole, you know, his business, his personal and professional life. So I would, that's my advice, is get clear on your, your personal, like how you want to feel in 2019, 2020, like what, what are the most important personal milestones, and then figure out how your business can support that. And I think most of us, a lot of us, and I'm certainly guilty of it, it's, it's, you know, you set these business goals first and you either forget or put your personal goals second. And it makes your business goals harder to reach because you're not the best version of yourself. You're not relaxed and creative and enthusiastic and fulfilled. So you just chug along and have, you know, a mediocre year. So that's my best advice. And Jim if, or Tim, if you guys want to jump in. 
No, the only thing I would add, I don't know if you're on our coaching schedule yet, but um, pick pick one, you know, when you're setting your goals, pick one, two, or three things, the most important things that you really need to get done to achieve the goal. You know, whatever your weakness is, I would say, you know, focus on a weakness and improving a weakness and focus on getting better at a strength. But just identify a couple things at a time and make that your, you know, your monthly goal. You know, way to eat an elephant is a bite at a time. So just pick one thing to start with, one, two, or three things. And if you want to get in our coaching schedule, we'll, you tell us what it is, and we'll call you once a month and hold you accountable to get it done. Do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, the only thing I would add is, is very specifically, first off, it's, it's a great question to ask. It's a great position to be in and the right thing to do when you're looking at where you're, you know, where you're heading, trying to get, get things together and have a great year. I think the big challenge is that all too often all of us are guilty of, you know, taking forever to figure out what we want to, what we want to do and, and get, get paralyzed by analyzing our circumstances. And as Jim said, and I'll, I'll just reiterate this, Take that step. You know, you've got to be willing to fail, but fail forward. And if you've got things that, that are staring you in the face and you're not sure which one to try, the right one to try is the one that you tried because you're going to learn something from everything that you did. And as you move forward, you got to learn from anything that you do, whether it's right or wrong. And uh, the old saying about failing forward is very true. As long as you're moving, moving forward, you're going to find ways to do it. And if you approach it with the right attitude, which you obviously have for asking the question, You'll be just fine, but don't wait. Get moving. Sounds good. I appreciate the uh, advice. I know that the, the biggest enemy out there is me, so I just have to overcome me. But uh, I can appreciate focus on a handful of things and then moving forward. You're also awesome. your very best asset, bud. You're not, you know, you can say you're, your own, you're the biggest enemy, but you're all you got. You're your very best asset as well, and, you know, you're, you're sharpening up that asset, and that's what's important. I appreciate the ability to focus. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you participating. We have three more in the queue. Next up is phone number ending in 1144. You're up next. Hey, <clears throat> I hope you gentlemen had a Merry Christmas. It's Joe Lehman in Montgomery. How hey, you? Big Joe. What's up? Well, I have received a letter from an attorney about my mailbox motivator letters to the who we were showing as the personal representative of the estate and it would have actually have been her father's estate and apparently the mother got very upset I, I actually had a conversation with the mother back on December the 10th and 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 uh, she was reasonably nice and stated that she was going to remain in the home. And I said, fine. And I marked her to do no more mailings, no more contacts, et cetera. And, um, and then I get this letter. I, I, I <clears throat> was dated December the 19th, but it came to, you know, it came in while I was not in the office over the holidays. And I got it this morning and I just went back and checked my records, uh, we had mailed to the personal representative in October, November, early October, November, and December, and then I'd had the discussion with the mother on the 10th of December and had, had my notes in the CRM about that. So I'm wondering if perhaps I ought to call the probate judge's office and see if we've got the right personal representative, if, if whoever's pulling the records is making a mistake in not looking at the right field to pull the correct name, or should I call the attorney that sent me the letter? What do you, what do you feel I ought to do with this? I don't understand. What, say, what, what does the letter say? That's what I was saying. It, yeah. It, it says, I'm in receipt of an undated form letter from you to Miss Cynthia Silvestri related to the property located in 9106 Gunnison Court, Pike Road, Alabama, offering to serve as Ms. Silvestri's agent in selling the property. Indeed, we checked the property records, and there's absolutely no transfer whatsoever to Sylvester Silvestri, to Cynthia Silvestri at any time 
relating to the Gunnison Court property. The property in question belonged to Miss Silvestri's father and Colonel Silvestri and Colonel Silvestri's wife, Miss Anita H. Silvestri, and was owned by them jointly with right of survivorship at the time of Colonel Silvestri's death. Miss Anita Silvestri now owns the property rather than Cynthia. Your letter to Miss Silvestri caused Miss Anita Silvestri much concern, and I would ask that you refrain from sending any further correspondence to Cynthia or anyone else concerning the property at Gunnison Court. Likewise, to the extent you may have sent a form letter to any of Colonel Silvestri's other children, raising hopes that they may have had an interest in Colonel and Mrs. Silvestri's marital home, I expect you to write them, setting the record straight, exclamation point. <laughs> Thank you in advance for your assistance relating to matters referred to herein, and do not hesitate to call me should you have any questions or comments. Scott, so what what count what county I'm sorry bud just real Montgomery quick Montgomery County what, Alabama Okay let me I'm going to look one thing up real quick while we're doing this cuz what I'm suggesting is we go look at the uh, actual document from it as well Just give me a second here Yeah why don't why don't we uh could I, it, is, it, all this data comes this, from the docs from the court filing Right well this this is came from my lead list of October 4th 2019, and I'm I'm happy to check with the probate judge's office. I I mean, I just opened this thing up this morning, about an hour and a half ago or so, and I said, well, you know, I looked up the tax records, and then I said, I'll just get on the call today and ask about this. Well, here's the thing: so, if if the fellow passed away, uh, his assets are going somewhere, and if she's his daughter, um, he. It's very possible he died intestate. She was unaware of it and uh, is shown as a beneficiary based on somebody else filing this. I would, I, I'm gonna, I would say if you're wanting to do that, go, go get the doc from the court. It, it shows that that the daughter is the personal representative of the estate, and it shows her address is the same address as the father, but the court. The, the tax records show that the home was owned jointly by the father and mother and then has since been deeded on a personal representative's deed in November to the to the mother strictly. So I I'm just wondering if we got the right personal representative name. Well it here's the thing, like we would did. Yeah, so, we wouldn't make it up. <laughs> It seems to me like, I mean, you, you found all the right people. Like, you're communicating with the right people. They just didn't like the communication. And it sounds like they have a good relationship with the attorney and said, you know, Mom was really upset. Can you do something about this? So he felt compelled to do something. The letter that you're holding doesn't really, it, it's not a threat to you. You've done nothing wrong. You, there's no anti-solicitation laws in, in our industry. I think it was just a formality, so he felt like he was meeting his obligation to the family. He said, I'll do something. And I don't think well, you have any anything that you have to do here. What I would do is I would call him up and say, listen, you know, thanks for sending me the letter. I actually spoke to Mrs. Smith on December 10th. I actually went through my records. We sent her letters in uh, September, October, and November. I spoke to her on December 10th, and she's actually marked in my database as a do not contact. And if you'd like, I can send that to you. If it, if it helps the family feel better, I can send you a record of that. And just show them that, that you are doing every, you, you are respecting their, you know, their wishes and, and, you know, honoring that. But he's not threatening you. I mean, as far as letters from attorneys, that's a pretty mild one. It seems like yeah. he, was, he felt like he needed to do something. And the other, well, the other and, side of this is that we, you know, there, some, some, for some reason, the person that's shown as the PR was in fact shown as the personal representative and that only would have come if it came in in general if it came in as part of the doc uh, unless somehow they missed the the transfer piece of this but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have the doc pulled as well from the court and uh, take a look at it as well and if you're if you're gonna go check with the court I'd be interested to see what it said on the document as well I'd very much I'm curious now well, I've got a court docket number. Of course, you know when you're in all the leads, those are always there. Yep. Do you need Do you need that? No, I have that. I have that. I just if you were if you are going to go check, you can probably get as quick as we can. If you want to go check and just have a 
copy of it, get a copy of it pulled. You can do it. We can do it. Doesn't matter. I just want to find out what the scoop was. Yeah. All right, we'll get to the bottom of it. Like like Chad said, though, pretty mild as far as attorney letters go. So I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah, you know? send send us yeah. just if you can scan a copy of that letter and send that in as well because I wanna I wanna get with the researcher and determine exactly where that data came from. Oh, okay. So I will uh, you scan it in and just send it to uh, support. Yeah, send it to actually just send it to me directly. Send it to Tim at all the leads com and I'll I'll look at this personally. Okay. All right, man. All right. I'll do that. Appreciate it, buddy. We have two more in the queue. We got plenty of room for more guys. Um, or we may have a little bit shorter call today. We've got just hit star six and then hit one. And next up is phone number ending in three seven nine six. You're up next. Uh, hello? Yes ma'am. Hello. Hi, awesome, yay, that's me. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Roxy. <laughs> this is my first time on the Mastermind, so I'm really excited. Hey, hey Roxy. I like hi. your enthusiasm. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm really, I'm really excited. I kind of like was like borderline gonna quit the program, and then I kind of, you know, I was like talking to Natalie, and then she was like, no, don't, don't do it, and then I ended up getting three listing appointments, so. Super excited about this is it. Roxy from our mastermind group that posted a lot in the last few days, right? Yes, yes. Yes. So I like your thread so I much. Have... I sent it to everybody. If you didn't notice. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I'm famous like, now. <laughs> the fact that the fact that you're willing to be vulnerable and tell the truth mm -hmm. in front of everybody, and that everybody else jumped in and supported you, I couldn't help myself. So. We decided, yeah, that, no, that as partners, we decided we needed to mail that to so all of you got anyone who's not in our mastermind group should be. So we sent it out because it was just a great example of, one, you being vulnerable for the benefit of others, but two, others mm -hmm. jumping in to help immediately. So thanks for and Roxy, yeah. it only went out. Yeah, it only went out to 23,000 people, so don't, don't, <laughs> don't be concerned. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Honestly, I'm I'm like flattered that you you know thought I could. You thought like it made that big of an impact on you. I mean, honestly, I'm just like so grateful that I didn't quit. I actually, I like honestly, I don't act. I'm not even signed up for a a, a county right now, um, because I had canceled it. Like I was so determined to be done. Like you know, and this was only two months in. It's incredible because. It's just not, I, I, I didn't even put in the full three months of the minimum three months, you know. So it's just, you know, it's not, it's not about, it was a shiny object syndrome, basically. You, you, see, you see people have that. Sure. Anyway. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to be in. Actually. Um, and Roxy, I think you said you got, you got, what did you do differently? You just got... All of a sudden, you got three deals out of the previous two months' efforts that you'd put in. Is that what happened? Yeah, I actually made the calls. <laughs> oh, imagine that. You actually picked up the phone. <laughs> yeah. Good for yep, you. Yep. <laughs> that is, is awesome. Okay? Yeah, is it okay if I ask you about, like, um, like, two or three questions? Is that okay? Sure, and I'm probably going to have Natalie call you back to get you back, uh, get, get new leads again, if that's okay. Yeah, I actually emailed her. Um, I, I called her on Christmas Eve, which was stupid, right? And then I realized that obviously you guys aren't working on Christmas Eve, so I, I just emailed her and told her to call me, and she, you know, emailed me back to call her today, actually. So awesome. I'll call her right after this. But, yeah, um, so I guess one of my, so one of my questions is for – Someone who I've I'm just started following up with, um, when I spoke to her, she has real estate. She needs to sell it, but she, like, said, and I quote, I have a realtor friend who I've known since I was five who specializes in the area. I don't need a realtor. So. Um, Great. Have you signed a contract with them yet? No. Yeah, exactly, right? And, and I was asking her if her, you know, her friend has experience with probate. And then she didn't answer my question. She just kind of said, I don't need a realtor. I don't need a realtor. You can call me back if you want to offer other services, but I don't need a realtor. Perfect. 
So this one's really <laughs> easy to overcome. Um, oh, good. This, okay. is, this is one of the, it's one that you'll hear often, like we actually train this in mastery. So this is during the role play session. Of the, we, in mastery, we do an objection role play for like the mm -hmm. top eight objections that you hear. And this is one of them. But you can roll at least 80% of these, like you can roll them into clients. Um, because w what you have to do is find a way to demonstrate your value without dragging their trusted realtor through the mud. And what I try to do is get that realtor in front of them first and, and, and create enough curiosity that they won't sign anything with them. But I want them to meet with that person. And then I want them to commit to meeting with me because the contrast is going to be stark. Like that realtor is going to be talking about their listing presentation and fumbling with their iPad and talking about how great their marketing system is and a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff that matters in real estate, but it doesn't really matter to the PR. It, doesn't, it, it has no emotional weight. Where when you show up, you're going to be focused on, you know, what's, your, like, what's the overall situation? Let's look at all the ways I can help. And we, there's, there's even a part of like the way I close out my calls. I do an insulation clause that kind of does the same thing in case, so in case I didn't identify competition or in case competition comes in behind me. Um, <clears throat> but, but the idea is to get that person in the door first, get them to commit okay. to a tentative appointment, and then when you get face to face, they'll, they'll, they'll roll at least 80% of the time. Um, I'm batting a thousand on this. Like there was the the one that I, I tell a story in mastery. There was a guy that had used his neighbor was his realtor for 28 years. Every piece of real estate they've ever bought was through this lady. And the objection on the oh, phone yeah. was, "Well, buddy, you can you can come look at the house, but you're wasting your damn time. We've used Kathy for 28 years." And I said, "That's fair enough. I'm willing to take that risk if you are." What you're going to have is a probate professional that's going to do two or three hours of homework, show up, give you his professional opinion of what's best for you and your family to maximize equity and minimize stress, and then I'm going to hand it to you. And if you see value in me being your realtor, then you let me know. If not, you just got like three hours of professional help from somebody who's got a lot more experience than Kathy. So how about 3 o'clock on oh, Friday? Cool. Well, you can come, but I'm telling you, you're not. You, I'm not signing a damn thing. And I said, I, I, listen, I'm telling you, I'm coming to help and provide value. And if you need, if you feel like you want to sign something, I'll have it with me. Well, fair enough. Come on. And I went over there three days before Christmas, walked through the house, talked to them about like very people focused, and I talked to them about their situation, what their challenges were, what they were struggling with. We went back to the kitchen. The blue folder was laying open on the counter, and we were sitting there talking about people, not real estate. We were talking about their situation and how I could help. Oh. And he uncrossed his arms. He dropped his head and kind of shook it and, not, and looked at his wife, and he, he said, as he's pulling the listing agreement out of the folder, this is how I, I don't ask for business. He's pulling the listing agreement out of the folder, shaking his head, saying, I don't know what the hell we're going to tell Kathy. <laughs> but it, it's you've got to stick in the conversation. You need to find a reason to get face to face, like anything, whether okay. it's a market value, a market valuation, uh, a visit just to see the personal property situation, to find suitable mm -hmm. living for family members, to introduce them to property management companies, whatever it is. Get face to face and try to try to get face to face after your competition, and it's over for your competition. Like they will see so much value in you that you won't have any competition. And I've got lots of stories like that, but that's the one that I, it was just the funniest because he was like, he was rigid. He's like, you will not get, you're coming here to waste your time. And it was that easy. Like he signed the listing agreement before I asked. And Chad, just a little sequel, sequel to that. I can't tell you how many times in my career I had that situation where the people acknowledged they really felt comfortable listening with me, but they felt bad for their friend. And just a great yeah. close, <laughs> a, great, a great point to get past that is, well, I understand you feel bad about calling Kathy. Do you want me to do it for you? <laughs> and they'd oh sure sure and I'd say I'll just tell her that you know they you really felt bad but I twisted your arm and made you list with me how's that and it it kind of takes the pressure off you know it, it's even a good trial close even if you don't know they're going to list for sure say so we only have one decision to make uh, do you want to call Kathy or shall I <laughs> that's good. I 
I like that. <laughs> I, use, I use that a few times, and then they say, no, nah, you, you, it's an alternative close, and where you win either way. So uh, just, just a suggestion as, as a way to get over that uneasy period, because it does happen. People do feel obligated, and, you know, once you can get them to, certainly once they say, you go ahead and call Kathy, you know you got the deal. Just pull out the paperwork and get it signed. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, uh, she wouldn't even let me get a word in edgewise because, well, she also told me that basically there's, she's having issues with her siblings. And then I said, I don't know if this was a bad response or not, but I said, what's going on? And she said, well, I'm not going to discuss that with a complete stranger. And I was like, okay, fair enough. Um, so what, what do you, what does that tell you about the combat. conversation? Pardon? What does that tell you about the conversation? Um, well, I didn't really have much control in the conversation. You didn't have rapport. Oh, rapport. Oh, right. So this That's is the right. reason we focus on people and situation, because this, this particular niche is more sensitive, emotionally sensitive. So we don't go straight to real estate. We don't go straight to business. We try to focus on understanding. Like, so she was... She was giving you some slow pitches, right? <clears throat> like she's just starting to tell you so that her problems. So she had some level of trust because mm -hmm. she was willing to say that versus hanging up on you or just, just getting in that loop of, listen, we have it handled. I said we have it handled. Like those are the ones that are hard to deal with. Yeah, so if yeah. she was engaging with you saying, well, listen, you know, things are not great right now, then, then you have to hold yourself accountable to ask better questions. And if you're asking okay. good, high-quality questions, especially open-ended emotional questions, then she'll, then you'll get the engagement you're looking for. So what happened is she didn't see, you didn't have rapport because you didn't demonstrate enough value or enough interest. And mm -hmm. you, you can, like, feel felt found. You've probably heard us talk about. That's a good mm -hmm. way to help people feel comfortable to get into rapport really quickly. When she says, you know, something like, well, listen, we've got a realtor in the family, yada, yada. Listen, I, I understand how you feel. I mean, we most a lot of the clients, the families we help, feel, felt the same way. But what they realized is they weren't on the phone with a realtor when they when they actually took an opportunity to help us, to have us understand their situation. They we found dozens of ways that our team could help. So this isn't a real estate call. We're focused on helping families. So let's talk about what the biggest thing is that you guys are dealing with, and let's see if I can help. So what's what's been the toughest thing so far? And just distant, get away from the real estate for a second. And then now you're not talking about, you, you don't want to talk about the house. You do, but you want them to feel like that you, that's not what it's about. Give them an opportunity to air out some stuff and, and give you some ammo so they can, they can put up their red flags and you can come and take them down, right? But mm -hmm. it, Absolutely. It, it, it comes down to if you're asking good, engaging questions, people, you'll get into rapport really quickly. And it's hard to tell without hearing the exact conversation, but you, you know, she felt like she was being pushed into something before you got into rapport. So that's what you need to focus on going forward is make sure you're in rapport before you turn the conversation to real estate or asking for an appointment. Make sure that it's, it's a, you know, a good conversation. Okay. And you may be able to re-enter that one. Like, that's one you know that they, they have real estate and a motivation to sell. So you might find a re-entry point. And you, you might do something like, you know, do a market absorption analysis or a CMA and figure mm -hmm. out what you think the property's worth and call back and say, you know, listen, I, I thought about our conversation. And I think that, you know, I, I'm, I'm holding myself to a higher standard going into 2020 because I realized I almost quit something that means a lot to me and can really make a difference in the community. And I yeah, know that, that you absolutely. said you don't need my help, but I'm cheating myself if I don't at least try this. So I've done X, Y, and Z for you. I'd like to come by, even if it's just for five minutes, I'd like to come by and, and just prove to you that I'm here to help and make a difference in the community. I'm going to hand you three hours of professional work and if you feel like your agent is the best person to help you for, throughout this overall process, that's fine. There's no risk for you. I'm not asking you to sign anything or pay anything. I just want the opportunity to know, like to understand your situation, know that you've been taken care of. Can I drop this off on, on uh, Tuesday around 2 o'clock? 
And if they, if they can just make that little micro commitment, when you get face to face, it's going to be different than when they meet with that other agent. All you have to do is get, if you can get a five minute conversation and they can see that you're an empathetic, compassionate professional that can help with way more than just getting a house on the internet, then they're going to engage with you and be like, well, how, how do you get these, how do you get houses emptied out for people? Or how do you do this or that? And then you're in. Like then you have a way to help them and make money, right? So that, don't be afraid to try to re-enter that one. Just find something of value to open that conversation back up. And remember, your objective is always get face-to-face -face as soon as possible. Because then you're, you'll convert. Most people convert. Most people using this methodology convert face-to-face -face at a 90% or higher level. So if you can get to the house, it's, it's pretty much oh, in man. the bag. It's getting to the house that's the challenging part. And you were mm -hmm. close. You're just not, your questions aren't, aren't quite good enough. Like you've got to polish that and, and figure out how to get into rapport quicker, more quickly. And you're never going to get 100%, but you were pretty close on that one. Okay, okay does that okay. help? Yeah, definitely, most definitely. Um, so so my, my second, I'm, I'm going to start going to the role plays and, you know, just really hone the craft. So um, my good. second question is, I had a, um, a a personal representative who had actually two homes to sell, right? And because I didn't I didn't call her um, earlier, basically, because I was still hiding from the phone. She listed with another agent both of the properties, and um, but when I, you know, she did return my call. Because I, you know, I had explained to her kind of what it is that we do in the in the voicemail I left, and then she returned my call saying that she needs, you know, help with the estate sale, and then she started talking about how, you know, she's not going to make any money on the sale of the house because they're upside down on both of the mortgages, and then I was just thinking, I was just told, I was just telling her like, your agent didn't suggest that you do a short sale or try to initiate that. And then she was telling me that she need, she has to make money on the estate sale because she's not going to make any money on the sale of the house, and she'll probably lose money if every if, if anything. And I just kind of like um, wish I could help her more because I don't think she has a very good agent, but at the same time, she can't exactly cancel her contract, right? And then that and is it even worth my time to? Oh, this this sounds kind of messed up. <laughs> I mean, if she's already listed with someone else, is it worth it to help her with the estate sale? Because I do want her to have that help, but I don't want to, um, I would say, interfere or um, do anything in vain. All right. So you have two opportunities here. Three. Okay. First and foremost, you have an opportunity to do the right thing and help this family who's, at, who's trusting you enough to ask you to help, right? So okay, yes. That's one. Two you have an opportunity to step in and clean up a mess that another agent, I'm guessing the house is grossly overpriced, put on MLS, saying, well, let's just test the market. You never know. The right buyer might be looking. And we all know what the result of that is. And, uh -huh. you know, unfortunately, in, in a lot of markets, two-thirds of probate homes expire because they're overpriced and undermarketed. So you can, you can provide value and maybe get it once it expires. The other opportunity is okay. for you to partner, partner with that agent. So call them and say, hey, listen, I've, you know, I, I sent before you actually signed the listing agreement with Mrs. Smith, or before you had a, an agency relationship, she had gotten a letter from me. And I just want to be completely upfront, full transparency. She called me, and we did not talk about the listing. We, I, 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 you know, I have ethics are very important to me. But I do want to let you, I, I want to at least talk to you about how the listing's going. Have you had, how many web hits have you had? Have you had any showings? And I want to let you know we do have a short sale facilitator that can, we can price this home aggressively, get tons of attention. You can pick, I'll give you all the buyers. Like we're going to, we're going to find multiple buyer leads off of this. You can have all the buyer leads. We'll split the deal 50-50 and I'll facilitate the short sale. So this is a difference in this listing sitting here overpriced and the family not getting taken care of versus you and I both making a commission and you picking up two or three buyers off this listing. What do you say? You want to meet for coffee? 
and step in and take control, pay that agent, give them the buyer's leads, they'll feel great, they won't have any problems with the ethics of it, the family gets what they want, and then take it a step further and turn that family into a referral to your estate planning attorney to open a relationship because they are going to be impressed with what you've done. So when they, when they get done struggling through this, say, gosh, wasn't that bad? Do you think your family should ever have to go through that again? Yeah, me either. How mm -hmm. about we get you over to Mike's office and he can let you know what your options are. Maybe it's just a will. Maybe it's a living trust. It's really between you guys, but I want to know that you're taken care of and you guys never have to go through this again. You, uh, would Tuesday be a good day to set that call up? Great. Turn them into a referral. Go introduce yourself to a new estate planning attorney, and that's the other opportunity. Okay. That's All right. Does that really help? We, that's great, Roxy. We have three more in the queue, guys. Yes, We're Roxy. probably going to go a little bit over time today. Did you have one more question, Roxy, or is that good? Um, can I ask one more, and then I'll, I'll make let me, it let me Before you do, Roxy, let me backtrack. If you do not have a short sale facilitator, let us know. Jim's wife ha does that. She'll give you 100% of the commission, and she'll manage everything. So you, it'll be it'll be oh, like a awesome standard it'll actually. be like a standard listing for you. You don't have to beat that learning curve. Yeah, yeah she's only closed. Awesome. She's she's done about 2,000 of them. <laughs> so yeah, just reach out. Let <laughs> us know. We'll put you in touch with her. <laughs> All right, perfect. And then you had one more question. You said, Roxy. Um. Yeah. So my I, this is this is very quick. Um. Well, basically, I. Now that I'm going to be signing up for another county again, I was just wondering, is it better to do – have, I'm actually on, located on the corner of, like, several counties in California here, so I was just wondering, is it better to do a county that has a more manageable number, or is it, like, the more the better? Typically, the higher your lead counts, that, that means there's more population and more competition, just okay. demographically. Uh, so smaller okay. counties can sometimes be easier to break into. You can get traction faster there. But obviously mm -hmm. in the larger counties you have more more, more at-bats. You have more opportunity just in the sheer number of probates. Uh, it, it's, okay. it's hard to say market to market. Um, it, it's, you know, if you feel like you can manage, the one thing I would say, the, the, the most important part of this is can you manage that higher lead count? And if the answer is yes, go for it. Okay. okay, and if you, can right. if you can manage both, then go for both. You, we don't recommend that for most people, but you've, you've come in, you've gotten a taste, you almost quit, and, and now you realize you know, the value of consistency and, and systemization, right? So if you That's feel true. like you can manage that overall number of both counties, then I think it's time for you to do that. But you've got to look at, am I prepared to do the work? Am I going to make these phone calls and pay for these letters and do it consistently at this number, mm -hmm. or should I just stick with a more a lower number for now? I think lower but, is probably. But I just when I started out, I started out with two counties and I had about 200 leads coming in every month or more. Yeah. So I was just thinking, it is like 75, like a fair number, because it feels like such a downgrade from where I was, but at the same time. If I'm really working them and I'm really keeping track of all of them, then I'll have better results than I ever had. Yeah, so 75 mm -hmm. is going to take you about six and a half hours on each round of phone calls if you're mm -hmm. hand dialing. Like so, so. Oh, I have a dialer. Uh, what you, so I just account for that. So you're going to be on a okay. call pace of about 12 per hour if you're calling all four phone numbers. So look okay. at that, your overall business. Do you have an extra six hours a week to dedicate? And if, if you do, then it's pretty pretty simple, right? And look okay. at your schedule yeah, and say, so, okay, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing much other prospecting. It looks like I have an extra 10 hours that I could be prospecting. Well, that means you can call, you know, an additional X amount per month. So look, look at it that way. I mean, we find, like, to, to when you're prospecting, unfortunately, you don't have super high contact rates because of the nature of telemarketing these days. But... Typically, you're going to be on a pace of about 12 per hour, mm -hmm. including voicemails and conversations. So look at look at the available time in your business and look at your lead counts and say, does this math work? Can I sustain this? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We appreciate well, you, Roxy. I, thank you. I, thank you. You're very welcome. I think you're definitely in the mix for 
win of the week. Guys, we probably are going to go 10 to 15 minutes over today. We've got three more in the queue. The queue is now closed. So if you think of something last minute, just call us directly. And next up is phone number ending in 8202. You're up next. Hi, good afternoon. This is Myra down in Florida. Hey, Myra. Um, I, I'm one of those that has been hiding behind, hiding from the calls, and I finally started to, I started uh, making the calls and getting around to that, and it's going good. I'm getting good feedback. Haven't made any deals yet, but just getting to actually making the phone calls, it's it's like a big step for me. Um, good for you. And last, yeah, last week I asked a question about um, the lawyers and building a relationship with them, so I did that. I joined OCBA. And I actually called a lawyer today and because I did get a call from a lead that didn't have one and they they got it a letter that they needed to retain one. So I did make that first step as well. Um, my question for this week has to do more with like the setup and making phone calls like the what, what do you guys recommend like the uh, for a routine for like letters, how often frequency of phone calls? Right now, I have sure. it set up to, to for every for all the leads to get five letters, so one every 30 days, and then how often should the calls per lead be? Sure. sure. So the minimum effective dose that we find is you know three letters spaced out 30 days, each followed by a phone call. So that's going to give you three letters, three phone calls over the a quarter. And you've already stretched your, your direct mail component to the five-month mark, which is really good. Like, if in, an, in a perfect world, we should be mailing for 12 months and calling for 12 months or until we speak with everybody. But we don't always have the bandwidth or the budget for that. So I like that you are being more aggressive on your direct mail campaign because sometimes it takes people two or three months to even pull their head out of the sand before they're even willing to talk to anyone. So the longer you mark it, the more successful you'll be. As far as call frequency, it, it really d depends on, you know, you should at least, at a very minimum, follow each letter with one phone call. But what we're finding is, you know, contact rates are low because so many people get robo-dials and they just don't pick up their phone as easily as they used to. So if, if there's, you know, the, 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 the real, the, the, the number one place to, to excel at this is to just be more tenacious on the phones than anyone else. So if you're calling once a week, for, you know, for five months, you probably speak to everybody on there by the by month five. But if you're calling once a week, you shouldn't be leaving voicemails once a week. You don't want to leave the same message over and over and over. So if you're going to be that aggressive in your frequency, just call. If they don't answer, hang up and move on. Call back the next week. If you can, only, if you don't have the bandwidth to do that, and you're just calling once a month, then you should always leave that voicemail. So if you're only going to call five times, it's reasonable to leave a voicemail once a month. And you've got to look at your schedule. What I recommend is, you know, put put sacred blocks on your calendar and say, you know, like I just now said, we, ha we, we find it takes a, a manual call pace of about 12 per hour. So how many hours does it take you to get through your leads and where can those hours be protected in your schedule? And put that on your calendar as a recurring event. And you have to honor your calendar as your CEO. I don't care what fires are burning or what drama is happening. It's, that's going to happen. I guarantee it. If it's not already in your business, it will when you, when you get momentum. But no matter what, those are sacred blocks of time. And you have to make those calls during that period because you, you said that you promised yourself you would. So, like, for me, it was, was 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And those were my office days. Monday and Friday were field days. That's when I looked at houses, met with families, uh, you know, went to title company or attorney at offices. But Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were admin and prospecting days only. That's when we did transaction management, and that's when we, we prospected. Um, and that became, you know, at first it took discipline, and it was hard because it's like someone's like, you know, losing their mind because an email didn't come through or an inspector didn't show up. And you have to ignore that for that two-hour call block. You just have to, it's a discipline at first. Over a few weeks, it'll turn into a habit because you'll get a lot of positive reinforcement. You'll have a full pipeline. 
So you have to, you know, that, that as far as how to make this sustainable, as I would say your calendar is your number one tool, but you have to commit that that calendar is your boss and you will do what your boss says. And over time, like, it won't take you long, a few weeks, and you'll build a really strong momentum, and then it'll positively reinforce, and that'll be your way of doing it forever. And you'll be less reactive in your business and more proactive. That's my best advice. All right. Yeah, that help? I appreciate that. Yeah, it did. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you. All right, two more in the queue, and the next one up is phone number ending in 004. Hello? Are you there, 004? Yes, I'm here. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, so this is my first time on the call. and um, Welcome. Just wanted to kind of just get some feedback here. I haven't made any calls yet. I am um, I'm a real estate investor, so I'm not an agent. I'm just looking for opportunities and um, wanted to get some feedback on the approach that you know I should have okay so being your first call I kind of recap the culture here we have a much different approach um, that's why this is fun and easy for most of us on here and that approach is to appear as a vertically integrated real solution not just a real estate company so we drop the title of investor we drop the title of realtor and we just become who we are and we focus on people and situation until we've earned the right to talk about real estate. The difference there is everyone else is talking about their self and their business and the real estate, and they're going straight for the jugular. So it's it's a stark contrast when when uh, you know when a prospect hears from us you know with this approach versus everything else they, they they're getting hammered with. So that kind of you know piques their interest and gets engagement and. So that's kind of the idea. We don't want anyone on here to be to label themselves as just an investor. We want you to be a probate expert or a probate specialist or, you know, my name's Chad. I've got a team of people here locally that help families going through probate. And it's just a different title. So we kind of break those, those behavior patterns that have been established because everybody else is saying the same thing. The idea is to have a vertically integrated solution, but you only do the, the dollar productive activity. So you don't do estate sales, but you have a partner that does. You don't do clean out, but you have a partner that does. You're not the contractor, but you have a good contractor. And from a marketing standpoint, having this big, robust team and a broad scope of service, it gives you you know, two dozen different hooks for them to respond to versus I buy houses. They have one thing to respond to, and they usually reject it immediately. But if you're if you're saying we have a you know we provide a service in the community that helps families with literally anything that could be be challenging in probate, then they have every re they have any anything that they're experiencing is a reason to call you, and then once you get on the phone, you figure out what their problems are. You can spot motivation. You move you quickly segue to real estate. You qualify them. You set the appointment. You get face to face. Bring all your other partners to the table. You know the ones that they need. And you, you know you monetize the real estate component, and your partners can monetize the rest and do all that work. So the idea is to provide an, an extreme amount of perceived value by offering this vertically integrated solution, but not to create any more work for you. Ideally, to make it make it less work for you than a normal deal. Perfect. We lost him out of the queue, but hopefully he heard that answer. He just dropped out a second ago. But um, and the one thing I was going to add, you know, he, he doesn't. Uh, He's an investor. He doesn't list and sell real estate in the MLS, but he's got a partner that does. You know, the realtor is an equal partner. You know, we we your first, as an investor, one of your first partners should be a realtor, and as a realtor, one of your first partners should be an investor. It's you guys. This is one niche where you can work really, really well together. All and right. Well, we have place for for anyone on the call that rejects that, you're leaving money on the table, guaranteed. Yep. And it looks like we have one more person in the queue. Phone number 9942. You're up last. Are you there? Hi there. Yep, I'm yep. hanging in there. Uh, yes, my name's Tom. I'm from Pennsylvania. And I've got a number of questions. Um, the first one is that I started back in uh, October. So I have a lot of leads that I haven't contacted. I got sidetracked. And uh, we have leads from October, November, and now December. And I've finally started up my website, and I'm 
curious to get your opinion on what, how would I approach those older leads from like October and November? No differently. Well, the one thing you need to know for your for mindset purposes is those leads are probably more ready to speak to you now than they have been over the last quarter. It's the, probably the first time they've been through this. They've been coming into the holidays. They've most likely found themselves in probate quicksand and haven't accomplished everything that they thought they would. So these are really good leads. They, they season well. Sometimes it takes months before they're even ready to speak to someone. So don't get in the mindset of, I've screwed up and I've wasted this opportunity. I see a lot of people do that. I don't necessarily feel that from you, but I see a lot of people do that. There's, Appreciate that. There's, as, there's great opportunity in that, especially well, because of the time of the year that it is. Now, Should I send those people extra, letters? Absolutely. Okay. So and at, le at least send them one letter. Have you, have you not, you haven't reached out to them with direct mail or phone calls yet. Is that right? No. And actually the first batch of letters I sent out was for the December group grouping and they just went out and I think they'll arrive today or tomorrow. Okay. So here's what I recommend. Take your three months that you haven't reached out to lump them into one list. So it's, it's a single campaign and mail them three, at least three letters and make at least three calls, to, make a follow-up call at least. And just treat it like a normal campaign. Now, what you're going to find is you're going to find that a lot of them will have found a solution, the ones that were proactive. So don't let that discourage you because it's, it's been months. Like some of them will have listed, some of them will have already transferred the house to another family member or whatever. Don't let that discourage you. Just make sure you're using the option status tab in, in the, the record in, in my probate leads. Every time you talk to someone who doesn't need your help, go in there and opt them out. So what you're going to find is in your first mailer, you're going to mail everybody. By the time you get to your second mailer, you will have, have limited, you know, you'll have thinned out the list over that 30-day period. So your second mailer is not going to be nearly as expensive because you will have found a lot of the ones that don't need your help anymore. And then your third mailer will be the same. So I would treat this like a normal campaign. Just go back and, and put them all into one single mail order um, and treat them as a single list until you and get caught up. Oh, all right. Um, second question relates to my website. Um, on the website, it, says, it just has my company name, Keller Williams. And I'm a single agent. Um, and everything is in the plural, like about us, about contact us. And um, I don't know this to be true, but I have a suspicion that a lot of times people see just Keller Williams and not my branding, that people call into the office and they get somebody else other than me because they're not calling about a specific property. Should I change the uh, header on that to have my picture and something about Thomas Roth probation, uh, probate specialist or something like that? So I did, by the way, your, take this your... This is not, a, not an all-the-leads website, but your core, your core real estate website, right? No, this is your, the website I purchased from you. Oh, yes. Yes. My it, probate, it should be more my about, probate you website. about your brokerage. Right. So um, I just talked to... Uh, I'll tell you something else. Uh, it sounds like you may... If you have an office phone number on your website, take it off immediately. One of I my, can't. Like our, ver our very first subscriber, um, messed, he ended up missing out on, I think it was like a half a dozen transactions because he, he was pointing people to a website with the office phone number. And all of a sudden, his office mates started getting all these probate listings, and then he realized what was happening. So if, if you have to have it there for compliance reasons, put it way down on the footer in a light gray font. But the, the prominent phone number on the website should be your, your cell phone so other people aren't getting, you know, aren't getting your leads. Right, okay. Uh, I do have that set up that way, and I, I know by Pennsylvania um, real estate, Regs, I have to have the office phone number on there. I have to have yeah, some place I have to have the office address. Move it into the footer address. and make it really dull. <laughs> okay. Um, so your people can change that header around. That was we my can. big concern. You can, yep. yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, in the real estate solutions, the state solutions um, on, <clears throat> on that, 
should I have, I do have that, never mind. Um, okay, those are the main questions, so I should just get in touch with your people and um, just get those folks started again uh, from those other months, get them I think what I'll recommend, again. just to just to make it easier for you, well, you could go in and, and place three separate three separate orders. I mean, our mail system is very simple, and you can just in the same initiate them all on the same day. But go in and place an order for each of your three lists. Alternatively, you can combine them all into one list and place a custom like upload a custom list in the order process. Um, but I would treat it, treat it as one campaign, like in your mind. It's, it's going to be in your CRM as three different lists, but you know that for the next three months, you're treating that those three months as one list. Okay. And as soon as, we hang, as soon as we hang up, send an email to support it, all the leads, and just tell them you need help uh, uh, modifying your website, and somebody will get right back to you and get that done. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. So if, the, if I contact together. somebody... Yeah, I'll just I'll just uh, email support because I do have some questions with Tim. regard to the website. Okay, Tim, you said you wanted to say something, Tim. Yeah, all I was going to say is all you need to just put your questions all all in an email to support that you're looking for, and we'll certainly get back to you. And there's nothing on your website. This is kind of important for everybody as well. What we give you to start with as a website is a template to begin with, and we customize it specifically to whatever your needs are. If you're an individual and you need to change the we to I, that's probably the simplest thing to do. And more importantly, anything you need to do to customize it for the specific things that you want to focus on, we give you a place to start. You need to make it yours. So we'd be happy to work with you to customize it in any way that you want, look and feel, colors, words, whatever. It's your website. We'll make it for you. All right. Great. So thank you for your time. Alrighty. Thank you, everyone. This was a great last call of 2019. It's been a great year for us as a company. We can't thank all of you enough. Uh, wish you all a great, safe, happy New Year's. And I always end these calls the same way. I probably already always will. I want to thank each of you for being here. I want to particularly thank those that actively participated. It's going to be a hard uh, decision for winter of the week, but we'll get back and let you know. And I want to challenge each of you, take one idea, one thought, one thing you heard on today's call that inspired you, go out and put it into action, and please come back next Thursday and share your results with the group. Thank you so much, guys. Have a happy new year, and we will talk to you the same time next week. Take care. <laughs>